Welcome to Godless Reads, the new show on Chilling Tales for Dark Nights, where godless authors read their own crazy, wacky, fucked up, nutty, splattery, disgusting, disturbing, twisted ass shit. This isn't creepypasta, folks. This is the most bent up, bloody, gory, fucking bad shit, crazy stuff you've ever heard. On this week's episode, Texas's own high poet, John Stadberger, Baltus Berger, reads his Unclean Verse. Unclean Verses was the Godless 666 Awards gold medal winning audiobook. And now you can hear it all for you. So kick back. Grab your drug of choice and let Stabby take you into the dark, splattery, jacked up, twisted ass world. The Unclean Verses, Contos 1 and 2 by John Baltusberger. Conto 1. I insist that demons exist, dismissed out of turn by optimists. Pharmacists fight them with pills guzzled from bottled euphoria, nausea wrought by capsules brought with dollars won in wages from the very cages that breed the furious entities that torture me. Listen to me, because you can't see me, can't be me, you can't even spot my huddled form in the seat of the four-door car, the beat-up station wagon I bought second-hand because it had enough room for my kids to stretch and make a mess adding to the stress of every day. But the closed windows and tinted glass don't keep the demons away. They howl and bay at every turn, whispering word worms of worrying wasteful thoughts into a skull that is already filled with dread, that's already bled thoughts that would paint the city red with viscera and gore painted on every wall and floor. Would, could I even do that, the violence of creatures viewing thought forms of forgotten rotten uncommon amalgamations of action-reaction, bringing blunted rusty blades down on Susan from accounting? But why would I want to do that? Why would I want to peel what few parts of her mattered from her scattered, tossed aside body away from the skin and take each blood vessel within and build a circulatory snowman and set it out front like a doorman, welcoming each and every victim into a dreamland, a wonderland, a bloody wasteland? And why would I tear apart Mr. White so completely and so slowly? With teeth set to scroat to tear sweet meats out whole and swallow quivering testes down my gaping hole, why did I? My car is filled with my crimes, the demons are inside, the hacksaw I used on Lisa's legs is in the well and her tendons are in my teeth. My palate cleanser was Christine, her scalp is in my lap, stuck in my zipper. I fucked up and fucked it and mixed up the jizz in the cut and wiped it making myself unclean with her haircut. And really, to them I was the kindest, unbiased. They had been the brightest stars in a work day drowned in a quagmire of day ins and day outs. The least of porcine meat things snorting through soiled snouts. I was creative and loving with them. The rest was a celebratory fest, and I must confess that even my sobs are spotted with guffaws. <laughs> Infectious laughter infecting the moments of horror with amazement for the texture between my fingers. Bits of Linda squish as I clench my hands. I pulled her head apart with my fingers and eye sockets like pockets. Her flimsy facial and fatal cranial tissue shredded with no issue leaving her teeth and blood dripping down my arms. Even Lee's charms mean nothing as I was gutting her, pulling out the uterus I had penetrated numerous times during the course of our debonair affair, but I couldn't spare her. I didn't even consider it. She was more fodder for me to squander and make a martyr sacrifice to the demons screaming in my inner ear, damn puppeteers, piercing sane thoughts exchanged for deranged missions mixed with my emissions onto the corpses of every treachery that damned office job had given me. An apple a day keeps the doctor away and I could still taste Adam's Adam apple like a Caesar fruit salad tossed in a basin of Tommy's fat ass as dressing. Morals of Michael nicked, sliced off, shoved through sieve. Get rid of the metal nibs so that it wouldn't hurt the disposal in that little fucked kitchen where I disposed of them all. I had spent hours and hours in that office ignoring the demons. I did paperwork and teamwork, the framework that makes a career work. I kissed ass and sucked on asses and had my dick sucked in turn. And every time I fucked, the demons got a little quieter. I heard less and less out of her. The lust satiated her better than any other small sin. I had been perpetuating in my meditating on how to silence evil with lesser evils. It had been supposed to be a career. Last year after year, a life given for a life given back. Keep me in the black. Keep my family safe and fed. Keep my wife in pearls like the pearls I clutched and tore from Lucas in inventory. I liked the way his balls burst like oozing bleeding balloons and I assumed the torture was that I did enjoy it. They took my job away and so I took my time with all of them, an office full of victims with their own rhythms, rattles, and battles. 
I soaked the carpets of that office in vivid viscera violently violated with more passion than I had ever shown my wife or horror lovers. I knew that the news crews on the new day would say, how could this happen? It's a wrong question. The weapon against heaven leaves suggestions among the collection of dismembered severed parts rendered in the flames of hell that I have brought to the office and gave my life to, and in it nothing at all. The how it happened is so simply written unbidden along the walls where I dipped my hands in, entrails and wrote words of condemnation. I had been in such a place that my heart raced and sang a song in beats that screamed in my head. The question is why? Why did I give in to the demons that commanded and demanded from me, that spurred on my spree, that filled me with a passion for action until the blood came up to my knee? But now I was spent in despair, every percent of malice drained away. I drove home on the same roads I had always taken, the demons ran alongside, cajoling and singing jaunty jingles, retelling my sins and crimes against my co-workers and peers, like scalds around a campfire singing songs of Anan Heiner's glory. But I had no glory, I had no future or prospects. I had damned myself and my family to a life of poverty, incarcerated notoriety, a dynasty of mockery at the hands of incapable, inescapable, changeable charlatans, those who never listened to the words of a wing-bound malevolent demons moaning in excellent pleasure at the measure of butchery they suggest. The demoness stood outside my window in the cold, bold and boldly naked, her nipples pressed against the safety invisible divisible. She was my teacher in inhumanity and the savage damage I managed promised me an offering of her body if I could just pass the class. Past the glass, she licked her lips that would pucker perfectly around my member, giving me an eternity to remember. Her lips parted between two fingers, welcoming me in the warmth of her womb where I could forget doom. She gyrated her hips and bucked like a woman caught on a cock the size of a bull. She would take me whole and the thought made me quake with an orgasm again. I was spent but I couldn't stop. Was that the blood in my cum or were there bits of Nick jammed in my urethra from when I ravaged him? I made his head airtight and would be pulling globs of rain from my nixerl for the rest of the night. My pink leavings muddled in the muddy mess at my feet every time I thought I could retreat that the demon temptation would be drowned in sensation and I could end the sense of self-molestation that left me ragged. She would moan. A moan that drove it home that I was hers and I would be harder than the iron I drove through Dave's trachea. But she wouldn't let me touch her fucker, come in her cunt until I could seal a deal and would be signed in the blood of those I left behind. Four fingers deep, she offered me an Eden of unearthly delights, but I had to end the spite. I had to leave nothing in passing. She pulled dripping fingers out and licked the steaming moisture off her nails. She pointed at the appointed place, the anointed home. Inside, my children slept in warm beds. Sure, they would wake when the sun rose to pursue childish dreams in pursuit of an adulthood that would suck the life out of everything, like my wife whose innocence knew no bounds, but if I would rut like hounds with a horned whore that begged to be pounded into the dirt right here, then I would cleanse the world of the stain I created, the kin I crafted, the family I drafted. When I stood from my car dripping parts of Peter and Christine to the asphalt, I saw the demon was inside, beckoning me on to the final act of a psyche cracked. When I completed this deed, I would tragically leave behind humanity and actively pursue the life of a beast. I would become the priest of feasting on all the pleasures damnation offered. I would offer up those who were worthless and ascend my throne in hell. Canto 2 She beckoned me in dripping with dripping sin. The front door I had entered in looked like the lid of a coffin. The cloister of a crypt stripped of all warmth around me. The imps swarmed and stormed inside. My entourage of demonic exotic monsters charged with erotic symbolic power. This house the bank bought in my name that weighed me down in shame. A constant came of keeping up with neighbors I didn't care about. Simply because I was supposed to do who I did when I did it. This was a place I had raised my sons, my flesh, and blood that grew like weeds the HOA demanded I pluck up. The demoness I wanted to fuck peddled similar fare, by lines and guidelines about the lines I needed to cross, weeds of weak-willed children needed to be killed, drowned the embarrassment in a lake of despondent flames fed by nasty fatty fowls that would never grow to disappoint daddy. Somehow I knew the gibbering and whispering host of unwholesome, unholy, lowly things that my knees would not wake the wife and kids. Their screams that sat there in the air echoing in the spaces between my thoughts were for only me to see in cuneiform sounds, spikes like pikes, driven through enemy doubts that survived in the grey throbbing texture of my brain. 
It was robbing me of the ability to explain to deal with pain, but I was no inane, insane thing gibbering and whimpering to whispering gods that were not tangible. I was the cannibal god of coitus, and with joyous chorus of silent undulations, I crept with each step closer to the rooms where they slept. My mind was set, prepped with tools of malice I needed to saw through the ruse of whose familial bonds I would take comfort in. There was no comfort in hell. When I fell, I would rise up inside my mistress' demoness like Moses. I would part her waters and come through her. I stood at the threshold of my youngest son's room, shaking from nagging him up so soon. Each orgasm was a boon, squeezing my soul so hard that I could come a yard and not be through. I was coming mostly blood now, sperm drowning in copper floods. I needed to end this, but no ending without beginning, and the beginning was in front of me, waiting to satiate me. I opened the door. So small, so delicate. My youngest had a deficit in my estimate, no worth other than a mouth to feed while it fed me repeated whines. A line I crossed to shut her up, I knocked her up, a spawn of wasted semen, the reason that weakened her suspicion of my affairs. He didn't wake up, not that I expected him to. Defenseless little thing, hardly older than two. He wouldn't grow up, he wouldn't make it through. He wouldn't do all the things his mother hoped he'd do. I hated the little runt, the grub who gobbled the pay I earned until there was none left to give the girls who worked the streets. And the younger girls were costly, promptly emptying the secret accounts of money, but the younger they were, the more they had silenced the promiscuous screams of my future demon lover. No matter how boring I found the boy's mother, I had needed to keep the facade of marriage. Now, now that was over, and I stood over the emission that should have been swallowed. I could use the blade, but it seemed impersonal for what followed in those hollowed moments of murder. My stomach rolled, and I rolled him over onto his back. I covered his nose, and he rose to scream, and I pushed him down. I leaned down and pressed my lips over his and vomited. Sin and skin and muscle ejected from my stomach into the mouth of the boy I had created, filling him up with the force of those I had eaten, like a mother bird murdering instead of nurturing, turning feeding into ending while fending off his weak strikes. We were eye to eye, gaze locked as I filled him, regurgitating my exterminated ex-compatriots into him, a holy hymn of masticated limb in the grim pre-dawn darkness. His stomach swelled, growing in bounds, unbound by symmetry until it burst and the contents spilled throughout his tiny body. He convulsed and shook and fought as he choked as he soaked his mattress in urine. As he ceased to be a certain person, a childish burden who had strangled on my past meal sermon. Now looking at him, I was angry once again. I was empty. My petty meal wasted on a wasteful little angel was painful. Now I used the knife. I cut deep into flesh, severing the pieces. I hadn't needed them to be too small, just smaller. I took handfuls of the boy and slick with his blood and juices, I slid him in my ass. Each fistful crammed in hurt more but felt better. The stretch brought tears of joy to my face, more lube to add each mealy blob of boy to my colon. Each time a bone or tooth scraped the prostate, I hit that mental state and my video death had moving on and they give me by damn pause, pushing him up into me so that my issue was mine again. When nothing was left outside of me but the stain of remains that would remain like a memory of wasted effort, I left as he became rectal drippings on my way for the boy's brother's room. The brother is older, my firstborn son that I knew, the first child that wasn't aborted or sorted out in the back of a car with a hanger between two high school kids who had been cavalier without fear and practiced the time-honored tradition of fucking in the back seat. This one was done in wedlock. Another concession to a wife I never loved. I stood over the bed and considered how much I wanted to cut off his head, remove the parts of him that people said looked like me. I didn't want any part of any part of his parts. The knife I had used to make his brother suppository sized in my hand felt more natural than any time that I had held him. I dropped my hand to his face, banned his breath, and held him in place. That face that had my dimples and smiles, that face that had her gaze, I wiped it out with one stroke at a time while he bucked under me, cleansing the flesh, leaving his skull fresh, lidless eyes staring. I jammed the skin in his mouth, clogging his screams there. He made too much noise, so I made too much of slid in the center of his neck, perfect for letting out air and secrets. The wet cut in the young flesh sung to me in ways my wife's nudity never could. I felt my remending I raw red jump at the thought of cooling flesh so young. I was already nude. My stomach was empty, my ass was full, and my lust was up again. Up again and ready again, I pinned his squirming head down as he died and shoved my in the warm blood that fled the wound. Face skin up and out of his mouth, 
pulsating like a sunburn sunbathing like a volcano awaiting a chance to explode and bestow the flow of position from the depths up through the lips and it did muck but no mighty rocket of raging white waters but rather a drivel pushing from aching skish to shelf mostly as all the scrape of his teeth mostly a dull talk now because i withdrew pulled one last shudder from me but now it was time to see the mother I looked down at my work and there was no despair in the air. I had killed this one and despair like a pair of birds who had been issued from and ended by my stones. When I started my night, when I began my descent, I had grieved my actions as one who was possessed. I questioned whether this errand was my work or that of a deranged rider, the demoness taking the reins, but no. I enjoyed this myself. I had worked this out myself. I let myself out with the permission to be the beast I had always wished to be. I stepped away intent on making my way to my bedroom, but the boy called to me still. My spillage on his face seemed too much a gift, too much respect. I dug into his chest with the knife tearing and rending. I wanted an ending to having ever had anything resembling tender, tending emotion to this parasitic growth. I ripped his ribs apart with my hands and jammed the knife so deep and hard that the guard pushed through the heart and pinned it to the bed where I had committed the cardinal sin. I brought his ribs with me, but I left the knife with the boy, inseparable, as he had wished we could be. In my room I watched her sleep like a creep who would keep the image of her peace in their minds forever. I would never surrender the splendor of what I would do to a moment in fog. I wanted to lock in the before and after of my actions like a tapeworm-fed former beauty pageant queen seeing how far she's been. This was my transformation from kept dog to free man, from man to demon. Even empty of semen, I felt divine and masculine. I had undone the shackles of children that had sputtered out of her. The youngest was deep inside of me as I had been destined to be the oldest, and now the lock of marital morality that chained me to the apathetic chastity lay before me sweet as could be, ready to be sacrificed on the altar of atrocity. I no longer needed to be quiet, it was just her and me, no need for secrecy. No one left to call the cops and end the lunacy of degeneracy I was generously piling onto the family. I stood sweating blood and sweat through pores that had been clogged with gore. The blood beat a beautiful score in my ears. My muscles were sore. This was the culmination of everything I had wanted and more. This was the bloody fanfare of violence galore. This was the flooding out to sea of blood and the washing ashore. I trembled in anticipation for the vile visitation I would bring down on her. There in the back of me was something I didn't expect, a tenderness that made my heart ache. Despite all of her many shortcomings and flaws, despite the laws of man and God I violated, this common woman had made a common man of me. She had been with me, trusted me, stuck with me. But even now, with the planned violence, I didn't want to penetrate her. I hesitated to demonstrate how I've speculated on her devastated corpse. Every time we'd laid together, I had dreamed of this December when I would dismember her body and never enter it again. Despite my reluctance to enter her, I knew what needs must be done. And it could be fun. It could be a last adventure for spouses to embark on. Just looking at her peaceful sleep filled me with rage. She was the cage, the harmful bacteria phage that corrupted my body, stealing my freedom. For now, I was a Cretan who was beaten. The demoness sang so loudly, offering to make me a chieftain of a legion. I straddled her, waking her. She stared up at me in confusion. She could smell the blood and piss on me. She could smell the cum, but she couldn't see the mess I was. Her pale blue eyes, like the public pools filled with disinfectant, stared up at me. In the shadows of a room that had been a cell of misery for both of us. Robert, what are you? That was my cue. I jammed our son's ribs down like daggers, puncturing her view. She mewed in fear, music to my ears. I dug the bones deeper into orbits like the stingers of hornets, pushing through into brain matter so I could scatter and erase every trace of the spaces we shared any illusion that I cared. She screamed and thrashed about. I reached back and I smashed my fist into her face, driving bone deeper and loosening teeth into my knuckle meat. She convulsed. Her brains were shredded, a splendid end to a wedded method. I crawled off her and flipped her over, listening to the thick-tongued slurred murmur. She never let me have her ass. But now she was past protests. I pulled her panties aside, stained and filled with voided bowels. I still couldn't get it up for her. Even the violence wasn't enough. So I resorted to fisticuffs. I jammed my fist deep inside like I had when pushing our offspring into me. I was in her. Her slick wet shit coated my arm, lubing me up to go further. Her skin stretched and ripped, mixing feces with a flood of blood, but I still couldn't get hard for her. 
Frustrated, I turned my arm and opened my fist, grabbing and wrapping handfuls of intestines around my knuckles. I kicked her body and pulled my arm, dragging her colon out of her one inch at a time until I could see intestines spilling out. Greasy miles of rope filled with half-digested shitty dinners. I fell back onto the floor, trailing the insides of my wife with me. It was done. I could be whisked away by a chorus of screaming demons. But there was silence. I was alone. No demoness to condone, no sexual entity to share in my victory. I wasn't whisked away, sent astray to an astral plane where pain is pleasure. My displeasure was insurmountable at the unaccountable lack of black wings flying me to a hellish Valhalla to dance in Satan's gala of fleshy delights. The night was ending and I had ended everything. I was ready to be born again, like the flaming birth of a phoenix exploding from the filthy folds of a miscarried egg. But it was more than an absence of flight. I had extinguished the light, had invited a blight of fright at the height of the night. I had stripped meaning from the meaningful and left rooms of awful piled tall. I looked down at the tubes and tunnels I had pulled from my better half, my lesser half. My wife made less than by the actions of some shit slick appendage. Were the demons ever out of my head or were they simply the screams of my lust and rages fed every molecule of excess I drank in? Growing the voices in power ever louder until they soured on the game and proclaimed themselves victors, blisters filled with malice that existed in the calluses on my brain. Was I insane? I couldn't take that pain knowing it was all in vain. I lifted up the rope of her life, the digestive crack that slipped in my grip. Even as slimy as it was, I manipulated it into a form that was pleasing. As pleasing as my empty soul could bear, I tied the end closest to her to the rail and slipped the noose over my head. The bits of bone pressed against my prostate no longer thrilled me. Her dead body no longer delighted. I was alone, indicted, divided into the before and after, and after was a void. Without the demons, I was destroyed. I had enjoyed my bout of violence, my insolent middle finger to God in the established order. I made the new shorter. I made it as tight as sluicing juices would allow. With a swan dive, I bid goodbye to sensation, allowing cessation of the narration of molestation I had left in my wake. But my neck didn't snap, I didn't die quick. Too much give in the slick, bouncy fecal roadway I had used. I danced on the end of my wife's ends, dripping bits of my son from my bum. With each bone fragment or glob of gloop from my ass, a bit of me fell too, passing through the floors and the earth as they fell, carrying me bit by bit with my family to hell. Want to make sure you never miss a Chilling Tales for Dark Nights video again? Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell to turn on notifications.